All right, welcome to superglottic airway devices. A superglottic airway device is going to be a definitive airway that goes in the esophagus. We're going to go over three different devices. One is going to be the eye gel. That's what most departments are going to be going to. We're going to go over the king. That's what most departments currently have. And then we're going to also go over the combi tube. That's what most departments went away from. All of these devices are designed to go into a blind insertion into the esophagus. All right, first we're going to talk about our eye gel. Our eye gel is designed for blind insertion into the esophagus. As you can see, it's a triangle shape and it's designed to, to stop where the esophagus narrows right below the trachea. So for the eye gel, we just insert it in where the esophagus narrows, it's gonna stop our device from continuing down and our opening is gonna be right at the entrance of the trachea. So when we ventilate, our ventilations can only go into the lungs. If we look here, we can see our epiglottis and our entrance to the trachea our eye gel device is gonna go in, slide past the tongue, and where our esophagus narrows, it stops our device from moving any further down. And our airway, our opening for the airway, is going to be right into the trachea. So when we ventilate, the only place the, the air has to go is into the trachea. We're gonna select our appropriate size eye gel, and our eye gels are gonna be sized for the height of our patient. We'll select our appropriate size eye gel. We're going to lube the distal tip. For in class, we have our mannequin spray. When our eye gel comes packaged, it will come with its own lube. For the eye gel, once we open our patient's mouth, all we do is push in the, the device. We can see the throat start to uh, a lump in the throat when it goes in. We'll keep that downward pressure. We'll attach our capnography, which measures our end tidal CO2. Attach our BVM and ventilate our patient. To make sure that we're in the proper location using our partner, we're gonna have our partner ventilate while we use our stethoscope to auscultate the epigastrum or stomach and then also both lungs to make sure that we're in. So for our king and our combi tube, these devices are designed so with our blind insertion we're going to have a distal cuff and a proximal cuff. These are designed to go below the entrance to the trachea and above the entrance to the trachea. So that as we fill these cuffs, the only place that the air can go, which is in these perforations between the cuffs, the only place that air can go is into the trachea and into the lungs. With our King Airway, we have one tube to fill. Our king is designed different sizes. We have pediatric, under five foot, from five feet to six feet, and above six feet. The size is on the packaging. What we're going to do on the back of our device it's going to tell us how much air to inflate the cuffs to. This says between 40 and 55 milliliters. So we'll grab our syringe, pick the appropriate size volume, attach our syringe, inflate our cuffs, and detach the, sir, the syringe. This way we can check to see that our one-way valve works. 
And if we squeeze the cuff at the top and it stays inflated, we know that there's not a hole in the proximal or distal cuff. Then we're going to remove the air. Leave our syringe attached. We're going to lube our distal tip. And we'll come back to look at our manifold. An important piece when we insert our king or combi is that we're going to do a tongue jaw lift. The tongue jaw lift, as we grab that tongue and jaw and lift up, is going to open that airway for easy insertion of our supraglottic device. If we don't do our tongue jaw lift, we run the risk of kinking the tip of our supraglottic device, which won't allow it to ventilate our patient. So we'll grab that tongue and jaw, lift up, and just insert the device. Once the device is in, we're going to fill the cuff, detach our syringe, we'll attach our end title to watch our capnography and then ventilate our patient. We're going to auscultate with our stethoscope. We're going to listen first over the epigastrum or stomach and then we're going to listen over each lung to make sure we're in proper placement. With the king we have an option if we go too far. And I can show you with a larger King device. So if we use the larger King, my milliliters is gonna be between 70 and 90 to fill it. With the King, with our tongue jaw lift and inserting, if this device is inserted too far, when we ventilate our patient, we're not going to get, we're gonna get resistance as we squeeze our bag. Our king is designed so that as we squeeze that bag, we can slowly pull out until we're able to ventilate. So if you could tell, I wasn't able to squeeze, I wasn't able to squeeze, I kept pulling back. And then my cuffs, so we can tell my cuffs were too low. I pulled back until it hit that sweet spot. The proximal cuff was above the trachea. My perforations were at the trachea and my air was able to reach the lungs. Once I'm in and I've oscillated, then I'm going to secure my device either using tape or the tube tamer. Tube tamer, this is a bite guard that goes between the teeth. A screw that holds the device to the tamer and the strap that goes behind the head. That's the king. There's another feature on the king. If you look in the back of the king, there's a hole here that we cannot ventilate through. That hole passes through the king and there's an opening at the bottom. That's designed so that we can take our suction, place our suction tube down here and this is a straight shot to our stomach, our epigastrum. So if we need gastric suctioning, we can suction while we ventilate. The combi tube is similar to the King airway, 
where we have a distal and proximal cuff. The difference is we have separate valves for the distal and proximal cuff. It's going to work similarly where the, it's a blind insertion into the esophagus. The distal cuff goes below the trachea. The proximal cuff goes above the trachea. If you can tell the difference though, we have a larger area between the distal and proximal cuff on the combi than we do with the king. We also have two lumens on the combi tube, a one and a two. The one, this lumen comes down and there are perforations between the cuffs so that when we get into the esophagus, the proper placement, and we ventilate, these ventilations will go into the trachea and down into the lungs. The combi tube also has the second lumen or second tube that's a straight shot down the end and the opening is at the end of the tube. This is designed that in the rare case, we happen to miss the esophagus and run down into the trachea, we could still ventilate our patient. I know that this is large for this mannequin, but if we have this cuff inflated outside of the trachea, above the trachea, and this cuff inflated inside the trachea, and we ventilate through the first lumen, right? So we're gonna ventilate here. The air can't come back up because it's above the trachea. The air is gonna come out of these perforations in the middle, so it can't go down into the trachea and into the lungs. The question becomes, where does that air go? So if we ventilate through the number one lumen and we're in the trachea, the air is gonna come back up through the esophagus and make its way into the stomach. So it's designed, if you get it into the trachea, you ventilate and only hear sounds over the epigastrum or the stomach, we're going to switch to our second lumen, ventilate and listen for our lung sounds. On the top of the combi tube, we have two cuffs. The number one says 100 milliliters and the number two says 15 milliliters. We're gonna take our syringe to inflate to 100 and our syringe to inflate till 15. We're gonna check our cuffs by filling them, removing our syringes, and we can squeeze the bubble or balloon on the top and know that if they're inflated, the cuffs at the bottom are also inflated. We're gonna remove that air. We're going to lube our distal tip Come over to the mannequin. And again, with our mannequin, we want to make sure we grab that tongue jaw to do a lift. That opens the airway so we don't pinch our tube. We're gonna lift, insert the combi tube until the teeth are between these two black lines. Once we have that inserted, we're gonna fill our first cuff with our 100 mils, take that off, insert our second squeezing. We have to keep our hand squeezing on the syringe. If we let go, the back pressure will fill our syringe and we won't have that air in there. So keep the pressure on the syringe, detach, and then 
we're going to attach to the number one lumen first. Breathe. Notice that we have chest rise. We'll listen to see that we have sounds in the, in the lungs. If by chance we only hear sounds over the epigastrum in the stomach, no sounds over the lungs, we would change to that second lumen and ventilate. As you can see, it's in the esophagus because we're getting air into the stomach. So it's in the correct placement. With that being said, we are correct placement. We're ventilating through the first lumen, which is going into the lungs. Now that second is a straight shot into the stomach. So if we need to do our gastric suctioning, we can insert that suction in through the second lumen and provide suction. All right, so just to recap, we went over the eye gel, we went over the king, and we went over the combi tube. These are all definitive airway devices designed to go in the esophagus a blind insertion. The eye gel has no cuffs to fill. It's just going to be put it down into the, into the throat, into the esophagus, and the anatomical features will stop it. Our king has our proximal distal cuff. We inflate the tube and our ventilations come out between the proximal distal cuffs into the trachea. And then our combi tube, which is a dual lumen airway device, two tubes, same, same concept as the king with our proximal distal cuff. It just gives us an extra option in case we get into the trachea and now it's an endotracheal tube.